Welcome to this WiseOwl Report Builder 2016 tutorial. In this part of the series, we'll look at how to apply groups and aggregates to rows in a table. After we've created a data source and a data set, we'll look at how you can apply a group expression to a table, followed by looking at how you can apply various aggregate functions to other columns in the table. We'll look at how to apply sorting to tables which have groups and aggregates contained within them, and then how you can apply interactive sorting to a grouped table as well. So let's get started. I've started with a new blank report in Report Builder, and the next step is to create a data source pointing to the WiseAl Movies database. Again, just as a quick reminder, if you don't already have that database, we have a video here which explains exactly how to get hold of it and install it. There's a link in the video description which will give you a script that you can use to create it, and then just follow the video instructions to get it installed. Assuming you've done that already, you can right click the data sources folder and choose add data source. If you have a shared data source from a previous video in the series, feel free to use that one. Alternatively, you can create a new data source by giving it a sensible name, I'll call mine movies. Choose to use a connection embedded in the report. Click the build button to avoid having to type out the entire connection string from scratch. You can enter your server name, and mine's SQL2016 training, and then you can choose the movies database from the drop down list. Again, we've covered that in much more detail in earlier videos in the series, so feel free to reference those if you're not quite sure what's going on at this point. I'm going to click OK a couple of times, and there's my data source created. Ultimately, in this report, I'd like to end up with a table which contains a list of film genres, followed by a count of films in each genre, along with the sum of runtime minutes, sum of Oscar wins, and then the average of those two fields as well, average runtime minutes, average Oscar wins. Let's build a data set that will allow us to add that type of table to our report. I can right click my movie's data source and choose add data set. I'll give the data set a sensible name, I'll call it films. And then I can use the query designer to pick the fields I need. From the tables list, I'll begin by choosing the genre field. That's what I'd like to display in the first column of my table. And then from the film table, I'd like to include a field whose values I can count. So I'll include the film ID for that. And then I want to include the runtime minutes so that I can sum it and average it. And then the Oscar wins so that I can sum and average that as well. You may remember if you watched the previous video in the series that at this point we applied the group and aggregate feature to the query designer, which allowed us to perform the grouping and aggregating in the query itself. You may not have the option to do that depending on how you're populating your data set. For instance, if you're using a store procedure, you can't get to this stage. So this is why we're showing you how to do this in the report itself. So ignore the group and aggregate feature in the query designer and then click the OK button a couple of times to finish creating your data set. Now I can start creating the table that will display the results. Let's begin by right clicking and deleting the default report header text box. Then we can right click into the body of the report and choose to insert a table and then position that table in the top left hand corner. I'll begin by assigning the genre field to the first column of the table. And then before I do anything else, I'm going to run the report just to see what we get. And hopefully you'll see from the list of genres that you get the same genres appearing multiple times. So adventure multiple times, action multiple times, and so on. What we're seeing here is one row in the table for each individual row in the data set. So one row per film. And we're seeing the genre of that film. So I believe the first one corresponds to Jurassic Park. And then the second one corresponds to Spider-Man. And the third one is King Kong. I, I know this database reasonably well. Um, of course, we don't want to see that. What we'd like to see is each genre on its own separate row. So I want one row for adventure, one row for action, and so on. To make that work, let's start by heading back to the design view. If I select a cell in the table just so that we can see these extra icons that appear to the left hand side of each row, you'll notice that the genre field has this details icon, the three horizontal bars. That icon always indicates that the table is going to display one row for each row in the data set. The same thing is in the grouping panel at the bottom of the screen. If you can't see that grouping panel, by the way, head to the view menu and tick the box next to grouping to make it appear. What I'd like to do is alter the way this table displays its results. Rather than a detailed row for each individual record in the dataset, I'd like to group those rows by the genre that they belong to. 
To make that work, I'm going to right click on the details item that's displayed in the grouping panel, and then I'm going to choose to view the group properties. On the first page of this dialog box, the general page, we can choose to add a group expression, which changes how these rows are displayed. So I'm going to click add, then choose to group my data by genre. It doesn't really make sense any longer to call the group details. That's the name that appears in the grouping panel down at the bottom. So what I'm going to do is change the name of that so that it's called genre group. It isn't necessary, but it makes the report make a little bit more sense when you're designing it. Having done that, I can click OK. And then you should see that the icon listed next door to that row in the table has changed from the three horizontal bars to something like a parenthesis, a round bracket. That also affects what we see when we run the report. If I do that now, we should see that we get one row for each individual genre in the data set. Now we can start adding some aggregate values to the other columns of the table. Let's return to the design view and begin by adding the film ID to the second column so that we can count it and find out how many films belong to each genre. When your table is grouped, when you add an, a numeric field to a table, Report Builder automatically applies the sum function to it, and that's not quite what we want. I can change that by clicking somewhere on the word sum, and we should see that the entire expression is highlighted in blue. I can then right click on that and choose to summarize by any of the other aggregate functions. In this case, I'm going to go for count. I can then do a similar thing. I'll add in the runtime minutes field to the third column, and then I can drag in the Oscar wins to the new column on the right. I'll then drag in the runtime minutes and Oscar wins again so that I can create the average of those two fields. Let's go for runtime minutes and Oscar wins again. And these second examples, rather than using the sum, I can click on sum and then right click on it and then choose summarize by AVG. And the same for the sum of Oscar wins. I'll click to select, right click to see the menu, summarize by AVG. Having done all that, I can run the report again and I'll now have a full set of aggregate values for each genre. At this point, the report could do with some basic formatting. So let's format the averages we've calculated so they only display two decimal places. We may apply some basic formatting to the column headers as well. Back in the design view, there are lots of different ways to format cells. I'll pick a quick and simple technique to show you here. I'll highlight both of the cells containing averages by clicking and dragging. And then in the properties window, which if you can't see, you can head to the view menu and tick the properties option to display it. And then scroll down through the list to find the number format property. In here, I can type in a basic number format of 0, 0.00 to display two decimal places. While I'm here, I can highlight the entire header row by clicking the gray box to the left of it, and then choose a basic fill color for the header row, and maybe make the font bold as well. Having done that, if I run the report again, I'll see a slightly neater looking table. You may also like to sort the table by one of its columns. If that's a non-aggregated column such as genre, that's just as simple as it is for a regular table. Let's head back to the design view and let's view the tablix or tablix properties dialog box. I can do that by highlighting a single cell in the table and then right click on any of the gray boxes around the outside and choose tablix or tablix properties. On the sorting page of the dialog box, I can choose to add a sort. And then from the drop down list, I can choose the genre field and I'll sort in A to Z order. If I click OK and then run the report, I'll find that my uh, table is indeed sorted in alphabetical order of genre name. Sorting by a column containing aggregates is a little trickier to achieve. Let's say, for example, we wanted to sort the table so that the genre with the most Oscar wins appears at the top and that with the fewest Oscar wins is at the bottom. If we switch back to the design view and then just display the tablix properties dialog box again, on the sorting page, we can change our sort by from genre to Oscar wins, and we want it in descending order this time, so we'll go from Z to A. Now this should already be uh, be ringing a few alarm bells, I suppose. We've got the Oscar wins field used twice in the same table, once for sum and once for average. So which one is this going to use? Uh, the answer is neither, as it turns out. What this will do is it will look at the individual Oscar wins value for each separate row in the data set. 
So if I click OK and then run the report, what we end up with is the genre containing the first film with the highest number of Oscar wins. It's romance, which means that that must be Titanic, I believe. Uh, Titanic is the first film in the list with 11 Oscar wins. Uh, there are two others. There's uh, Lord of the Rings Return of the King, which represents the fantasy genre. And then there's Ben-Hur as well, which is the, uh, the drama genre. So um, this isn't quite what we wanted. What we really want to do is sort this table by the sum of Oscar wins in descending order. And that leads to another problem. Let's switch back to the design view. And if we look at the Tablix properties dialog box again, we'll see that in the sorting page, when we click on the drop down list, of course, we can't select the sum of Oscar wins, only the underlying Oscar wins field. Fortunately, what we can do is use the expression builder to calculate the sum of Oscar wins. Uh, this is actually going to lead to yet another problem. I should warn you now, this won't actually work. But just to introduce you to the basics of the expression builder, we'll be using this a lot more in later videos in the series, but here's a brief intro to it. If I click the FX button, that will launch the expression builder. And in there, I can see the calculation that's used to refer to the value of the Oscar wins field. I can edit that expression in a variety of ways. What I'm going to do at this point is wrap the sum function around this. It's a fairly simple edit to make. If I change the expression so that it starts with equals sum and then open some round brackets, and then at the end of the field reference, I can close a set of round brackets. So just give me the sum of the Oscar wins field. If I then click OK and click OK again, when I try to run the report now, I'll end up with another error message or an error message. This one's telling me that I can't run this report. And if I look at the details, it will explain that I can't use an aggregate function in a sort on a data row in a table. So um, what can we do about that? Well, let's start by clicking OK and then returning to the report design view. And then let's remove the sort from the table option to or the tablix object altogether. Tablix properties, sorting, select the sort we've applied and then click delete, followed by OK. Now, while we can't use an aggregate function in a sort applied to a table, we can do so if we apply the sort to a group. So back down to the grouping panel at the bottom of the screen, right click on the genre group and choose to view its group properties. There's a sorting page on this dialog box, which behaves in exactly the same way as that for the tablix properties dialog, except that here we are allowed to use aggregate functions. So let's click add to create a new sort. We'll begin by picking the Oscar wins field, and then we can click the FX button to edit the expression and apply the sum function. So let's wrap the sum function around this just as we did earlier. So it's equals sum fields Oscar wins value, and then make sure we've closed the set of round brackets. Having done that, we can click OK. I want to make sure that this is done in descending order. So the uh, genre with the most Oscar wins appears at the top. If I then click OK and then run the report, this time I'll see that I've got the desired result. You also need to be careful if you attempt to use interactive sorting on a table containing aggregates. Let's attempt to allow the user to sort by the film ID by creating a button at the top of the column, which they can click on to change the ascending and descending sort order. Back in the design view, as usual, to apply interactive sorting, start by clicking on the item you want your button to appear in. So that's the header cell of the film ID column. I can then right click and choose text box properties and then head to the interactive sorting page of the dialog box. I'll choose to enable interactive sorting. And again, I don't want to apply sorting to the detail rows. I don't want to sort by the film ID value, of course. I want to sort by the count of film IDs inside each genre group. So I'm going to choose groups. And then from the drop down list, I can choose genre group. I can then choose what field in the genre group I want to apply my sorting to. So I'll start by selecting the film ID field. And then just as we did earlier, I can click the FX button to launch the expression builder. This time it's not the sum that I want to apply, it's the count. So there's a count function that I can wrap around the field reference, just as I did with the sum function count, open some round brackets, fields, film ID dot value, close around brackets. And that will then, once I've clicked OK and OK again, when I run the report, I'll be able to sort by 
the number of films in each genre. So in ascending order first, and then a second click will go in descending order. You can apply the same technique to other columns, so we can use the sum function for the runtime minutes and Oscar wins here, or the AVG function for the runtime minutes and Oscar wins columns here. Just to demonstrate that very quickly as a quick reminder, let's allow us to sort in average order of runtime minutes. I can right click runtime minutes, choose text box properties, go to the interactive sorting page, check the box, sort by groups, and there's only one group to select, it's the genre group choose the field I want to use, which is runtime minutes, and then click the FX button to apply the correct aggregate function. This time it's the function called AVG, and I can wrap a set of round brackets around the field reference. Once I've done that, I can click OK, click OK again, and then run the report, and just check that this works. If I click once, I'll see the genre with the lowest average runtime first, and then if I click a second time, the genre with, genre with the highest average runtime. So there we go, some basic techniques for applying groups and aggregates to a table. We have plenty of other topics to talk about on the subject of grouping, but we'll save those techniques for later videos in the series. For now, thanks for watching, see you next time.